Hey guys, it's Dan here with a second video for the Thor build series and we're going to finish painting Stormbreaker. Now mind you, the weathering on this is very low because it's a brand new weapon, he just gets it in the movie. So I did a little bit of dry brushing just to highlight some edges and make it look more metallic. But other than that, we're going to look at how I painted everything, got the wood on there and did some wood textures. Yeah, so let's get into the build. Okay, so now I have quick seal all over the back of the hammer. Quick seal is just like a silicone acrylic sealant. It might not have silicone in it. I'm not entirely sure. It doesn't have ingredients on it. So that's just sealing up all the stuff. I sanded it, did two coats. That way all these lines that are in here will be a lot less visible. And you might notice that I also wood burned some more detail into these because they were looking too fat. I also glued them down so they they're sticking more in a stick shape and less in just like a curved loop shape, which they used to be in. And someone pointed out after I posted this first video that yes, finally a Stormbreaker without the wire wrapped around or the vines wrapped around because in the movie, it's not like that. Well, I went back, looked at some of the footage on YouTube, which is still a little grainy and it appears that there actually isn't anything wrapped around. So I'm going to keep it like this and the handle is going to be all the way down. So there's some quick seal here too. So now we are going to get into priming this with some Plasti Dip and then I'll show you all the next steps. We're gonna paint and all that. So yeah, this is the final build before painting. Oh, I also used my soldering iron to feather these seams in. So it looks, once it's painted like it's a smoother transition than just being glued straight down. All right, Deeks, so I'm going to be just doing a light coat of plastic dip. I'm going to do a dust coat. I'm going to just begin the top. I'm going to set it down to dry right here. That's why I'm just doing the top. I'm going to do the handle a different time. So let's put this dip in. Normally I would do the handle with paper. It's way too small. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to let that dust coat dry a little bit, follow the canned instructions, do some more coats. I'll show you when everything is fully coated because you know what paint looks like. Alright, so here it is all coated in plastic dip. This primes the foam so it's easy to get paint on it and it will stick and it's also flexible so it's going to be easy. It looks great. So here it is, this is all of the plastic on it. We are going to now take brown, actually we're going to do all the brown. We're going to let that fully dry, then we're going to do the silver and metal parts. Next, and then we're going to do a hand painting for everything else. I'm doing brown first because that way I can mask it off to the silver. I'm going to do a hand painting on it to make the wood grain look more like wood grain. I'm going to mask it off and do all this once this is all dry. And then I'll touch up the rest of the hand paint. Yay! So we have the handle painted brown. I'll put some paper on here because masking these so it's, the tape wasn't sticking to it. So it's sort of useless because I'm just going to hand paint this part anyways. So I'm going to spray this. It's not going to be hanging here, so I'm going to try to figure out how to balance it on that chair. Let's get into it. Let's start with a soft silver Okay, so the reason we did a layer of this first is because this stuff really mists 
out and gets into all places. And also, it's going to have a good base layer for the metal to adhere to. So when, oh, huh, <laughs> everything's silver. So when I spray the metal onto it, it's going to have a good layer for it to, to like shine through. So we're going to let this fully dry for how long it takes for the next layer. Then we're going to do the layers on top of that. Recoat at any time. All right, we can recoat right now. Awesome. So I'm going to do the dark fully. Try to tape it off and do the light. We'll see if that works. All right, we're going to let the first coat dry as long as it says, then we're going to do all the other coats and I'll show you when it's dry. Okay, so I have this taped off. This yellow tape doesn't want to stick to stuff too well, but this is going to let me paint the brighter pieces here, 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 and here. After looking at several different things, I think these are the only ones that are highlighted. And on some of them, it looks like the blades highlighted here and not here, but I think that's just reflections. So. We're going to go with this being the same color as this, and this being highlighted. All right. Okay. So I'm going to let this dry a little bit, peel the tape off, and then we can do touch up with painted paints. Sound good? Okay, so the tape that is made specifically for delicate surfaces and French paint. <laughs> Still, very obviously took off some of the darker paint, so I'm going to have to do some touch-up stuff in different areas. But as of now, this is as far as I am with the painting. So I'm going to actually probably do hand painting on all this stuff while this has more time to dry. I might try to create some paper stencils to just like hold and spray so I can mask off stuff easily without putting tape on it and just touch up some of this stuff. But I will show you the stuff that I show you and not show you the stuff that's boring. Alright? Okay, actually, I just touched up all the spray paint, made all those spots go away. So I'm going to get some brown paint. Try to match it sort of close to this. Coat this all up, and then I'll do some lighter passes, and sort of like doing some washes. Maybe some weathering. That'll be stormbreaker. Obviously, I'm gonna do a top coat to keep everything sealed, but yeah, that'll be it. Yeah, so I'm just taking different brushes and doing lighter and darker stripes of brown. Just mixing up different browns and just making it look more like a wood texture. I'm also putting some down here. At the bottom, it's important that you use a brush. I don't know if you're able to see this, but you want the rings to play an effect. So I'm using brush strokes to emulate the wood pattern. All right, so Stormbreaker is pretty new. Like Thor literally just gets it in the movie. So we're going to be doing a very, very small amount of weathering. We're going to do a couple of uh, silver dry brushing things and maybe that might be it. I think these lines are pretty visible already. So I'm gonna take some silver. Well, some titanium silver. Thing. Yeah, a piece of paper right in front. Dry it off so this actual dry brush. It's not making marks anymore. So now I'm gonna have to check it It's 
very subtle. Okay, I'm just gonna do that to the whole thing. All right, so it's very subtle. I added some brush strokes to all the edges and it just barely brings it up. And the reason I did it so subtly is because I want it to still look like metal, but it, like I said before, this is a brand new weapon. He really hasn't had time to use it at all. So there's just some highlights on all the edges and there's a little bit of scrapes. So highlights and that should be it. So I'm going to do clear coats, maybe on stuff just to keep all the paint in and Stormbreaker's done painted guys. Hey guys, thanks again for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a like. Leave a comment below about something else you want to see me make. But also, since this is part two of a full Thor costume, cosplay that I'm going to be making, you'll be able to see videos like that afterwards. So you can click subscribe so you can see those videos. And we have other videos here and here of me making and building stuff. I might even be doing parkour. So look forward to those in the future. And we will see you next time.